Assalamu alaikum. I am Rami Swain. I am a Dutch Egyptian game developer best known for my work at Vlambeer. Uh, we make video games uh, and we did that from 2010 until 2020. I'm also the organizer for GameDev.World and I've made Prescott. I'm a partner in Indie Fund. I help with IGDA and I used to organize the Indie Mega Booth when the, when we could still travel around the world. Um, I promised a talk about 25 ways to make better games. I'm going to go pretty fast because we don't have a lot of time. Uh, I'm sorry to be doing this in English. I also understand this is going to YouTube. Um, and even though my Arabic is, you know, okay, it's not quite good enough to give 25 rapid uh, really fast tips on how to be good on game design, for which I'm sorry. Um, I hope to return to Egypt soon. I haven't been for quite a while. Um, and inshallah, I get to, I get to meet you all uh, when I'm there. So, tip number one, dare to be bad at your job. Uh, game development is uh, always an experiment, right? And even the most famous developers you know, the best developers you know, dare to be bad at their job. I've met my heroes from when I was a kid. I've met, honestly, everybody. We, who didn't I meet? I met the Romeros. I met Warren Spector. I met uh, Kojima. I met Miyamoto. Uh, and all of them said the same thing. They don't know exactly what they're doing. They're always experimenting. They're always trying to figure it out. Ego is dangerous to making games. So the one thing you want to avoid when making games, any game at all, is knowing what you're doing. You always want to be searching for new things, for experiments, for better ways to do the things that you're already doing. So always be learning is what I'm really trying to say. Always be curious. Never think that you have the answers. Keep assuming that you're bad at your job. Then um, know the process, right? Game development is complicated and it's an experiment. And one of the ways you can make that experiment go safer is by knowing the process. So the process of game development is pretty similar most of the time, right? You go, you come up with an idea, you brainstorm. You then come up with the correct solution or the solution that you think will work. You test that solution. And then after you've tested it, you see whether it works. If it works, you iterate. So you continue building on it. If it doesn't work, you iterate. You remove that idea and you start over. So your game kind of goes like a little loop. You start small and then you keep testing and testing and testing until eventually. It's a big game. If you are in a team, know your team. Your team is probably the most important thing you have. And knowing the people that are on it, knowing their strengths, knowing how they talk, knowing when they talk, knowing whether they will uh, call you out when you make a mistake, knowing when they will be um, quiet. Knowing those things really helps. The most important person to know on the team is you. Know how you react to stuff. When I started Vlambe, the first thing I realized working with uh, my co-founder, Jan Willem, the first thing I realized is that when Jan Willem said something that I genuinely thought was good, I would sit down and I would lean back in my chair and I would just think. I'd go like, yeah, because I didn't like the guy. Me and my co-founder, we never liked each other. So we always had to make sure we had to figure out ways to make sure that we were listening to each other's ideas and finding out how I reacted to a good idea was a way to be better at making games. So know your team, know yourself. When you're brainstorming, know that there's no bad idea. Brainstorming is a safe environment to come up with the worst ideas you've ever come up with, because sometimes you need to go through a bad idea to get to a good idea, right? When you think about it, 
every game sort of started from a good idea and a bad idea, right? You come up with the Mario Kart is a terrible racing game. Terrible racing game. Like, cars don't behave realistically. You have huge characters. There's bananas. Why is there bananas in a racing game? But then also, it's a really fun party game, right? And you can imagine that a game like that started with, can we make Mario do racing? Which is a terrible idea. Mario is a platformer. Mario jumps. But then they came up with the idea of, okay, what if we made it a party racing game, right? The same way goes for for pretty much any game you can possibly make. Most games start from a bad idea. Ridiculous Fishing, which is probably my most famous game, started from a discussion about tuna fishing because we were watching a documentary on television about fishing while talking about Duck Hunt. And it was a terrible idea. And we did it anyway. And it was great. So when you're brainstorming, be very careful not to say that's a bad idea and then not do it. Or just saying no. Brainstorm every idea, including bad ones. When you prototype, prototype small, really small. Every prototype should be so small that you can probably make it in one or two days, right? Prototypes are for your mechanics. They're for the verbs of the game, the things the player does, right? The things the player interacts with, the buttons they press, the way they move the mouse, the way the controller feels. Prototype as small as you can. Don't try to make it pretty. Don't try to make it nice. Don't try to make it sound sound good or look great. Uh, You're just testing here. Prototype everything to throw it away. You're not going to use it for the final code. You're not going to use it for the final game. Prototype throwaway stuff. Your vertical slice needs to be even smaller. A vertical slice is when you take a prototype, you make a prototype of everything. Your vertical slice is a prototype where you put everything you have in. So you put the mechanics... You put the art, you put the uh, sound, you make the vertical slice just as look just as if it is the final game, but it's just a very tiny part of the game. It's like two jumps in a platformer or one course in a racing game or something that is contained and modular, something that is that doesn't take too much time, but shows everybody what the game will look like and what the game will play like, what it will feel like. So you put the effects, you put the sound, you put... And the reason you make this is two reasons. The first one is to prove that you can do it, to prove that you can make this game. Not just to investors, publishers, no, to yourself. Your team can make this, right? The second is to know how much time it takes to do it. Because if you know how long it takes to make one track, how long it takes to make one level, you kind of know how much it takes to make two levels or two tracks, right? So... Your vertical slice can be as small as it needs to be to test your game. Um, And for a platformer, that can be multiple jumps. For racing games, that can be one track. For a shooter game, it can be one room, right? Um, The smallest thing you can do to show what your game is. When you are designing mechanics, try to learn to exhaust your mechanics. So if you have, uh, let's stay with the idea of a platformer, right? You're making a platformer. Now, the first thing that should be good in a platformer is the jump. So when you are designing your game, you're designing your platformer, start by making 25 good jumps. 25 jumps that are all different, but they all have to feel good, right? And then... You say, okay, I've tried all the jumps now, but I can't make a game with just jumping, right? What if we add running? So now you design 25 running jumps, right? And then you go, okay, now I've got 25 or 50 or however many you make uh, running jumps that are interesting. A jump where it's a short jump and then a long jump, a jump where it's a long jump and then a short jump, a jump with two styles in between, a jump with one tile in between. And all of those have to feel good. All of them have to be interesting. All of them have to be fun, right? And then um, they go, okay, I want a double jump. You see, you don't add the double jump before you've realized that the running jump isn't enough for your game, right? So now you add the double jump. And now you make 25 or 50 interesting double jumps, right? And then you test them and all of them have to be fun. Can you do a double jump that goes like this? Or can you, do you keep momentum or... Uh, You know, what exactly does your double jump feel like? How does it play? You test, you test, you make 25 good ones. And then you go, okay, 
what if we need um that's not enough for the game so you go okay let's try running double jumps right and now you're combining mechanics always make a lot is what i'm trying to say exhaust your mechanics make jumps until you can't come up with new jumps anymore and then when you're done and you've got these 200 jumps pick the best 15 those go in your game right that's how you make video games you test you test you test you keep the best right and you don't waste your players' time. If you pick the 15 best ones, you're giving the players only the best of what you've come across. And the players will never see all the tested stuff, right? So they will look at your game and they'll go like, oh, this is the worst jump in the game. You will know that there were way worse jumps in the game. They will never know, right? You don't waste your players' time. You, the worst thing in your game should still be worth the players' time. Because in the end, if a player pays $20, $15 for a game, they don't like it. They'll go, oh, it's a bad game, right? But if people spend $20 on a game and they feel it wastes their time, they will hate it. Nothing is worse than wasting your player's time. Wasting your player's money is better than wasting your player's time. So don't waste player time. Only put the best in your game. Test everything. Make sure it's good. Mm -hmm.